Hi everyone! Welcome to another video and as you can see, special na naman ang setup natin because we have another topic that requires derma answers. And of course, meron tayong dermatologist right now na matagal ko na talagang kinakausap sa Instagram. Matagal na kaming connected. This is Dr. Jari Shlau Ang, also known as Doc Jaja or the Derma Mama PH sa Instagram. Tama ba, Doc? Yes, tama. Hi, John! Hi, Hello. everyone! Thank you for having me. Honored Hello. to be part of this collaboration. Actually, kasi ang topic natin ngayon is a very, very interesting topic. And it's a topic na matagal nyo nang nire-request as an audience. And this topic is hormonal and cystic acne. So we're going to be talking about that and a lot of other topics na matagal na kayong curious about when it comes to hormonal and cystic acne. Starting with, actually, eto, Doc, this is something na kailangan ko rin ng konting clarity. Kasi yung mga terms natin. Could you help us clarify the difference ng cystic acne, hormonal hormonal acne, how are they related to each other? So actually, cystic acne, it's a type of itsura ng tigyawat. Ang tigyawat kasi, acne, iba-ibang klase. May inflamed and non-inflamed. Non-inflamed yung hindi namamaga. Yung usually sinabi na whitehead, blackhead. Yung mga tiny bumps. Yeah, tiny bumps lang nakita. Ayan. So usually yan, tinatanong, Dok, ito ba? Whitehead, blackhead, tigyawat din ba? Yes, they are actually part of the non-inflamed type of acne. But then again, if it's inflamed already, namamaga na. Yun yung usual na nakikita natin na namumula, parang may nana. Inflamed type of acne, one example is cystic acne. So cystic acne meaning it's really deep inflamed, parang ang lalim. Pag hawak mo mahapde, malaki na mamaga. It helps also guide us, your us, the doctors, to know yung degree of acne, anong klaseng treatment din to give our patient. People are always asking na, ay, lahat ba ng cystic hormonal acne? Actually, that's, I think, one of the misconceptions. Ay, pag malalaki lang tigyawat ko, dun lang siya nagiging hormonal. Actually, all types of acne, it's hormonal. That's the reason why, usually, we encounter acne when we reach puberty, di ba? Kasi, dun nag-change yung hormones natin. But then, why do we say pag may cystic ka, baka hormonally triggered ba? Usually, this is in relation to those adult acne. Kasi usually, we expect pag acne after puberty, most of us na-outgrow. But some of us, until adulthood, or some even, pag adult lang siya nakakaroon na ng breakout. So actually, yung relationship ng hormonal acne when it comes to cystic acne. Cystic acne can be triggered by hormones, but not limited to hormonal changes. Actually, the main hormone talaga responsible for triggering our acne breakout, it's the androgen. It's actually a known male hormone, but both male and females, we have androgen in our system. Parang sinagsisignal siya sa oil glands natin na to produce more oil. Then, increase in oil or sebum contributes to acne formation. And then also, androgens can parang trigger pamamaga, inflammation. And inflammation, it's one of the known causes then for your acne formation. So, yun yun mga dahilan kung bakit related yun hormones in acne formation. I wanted to explore also more about I guess, yung causes ng acne. Kasi marami din curious dito eh, bakit ba ako nagkaka-cystic acne? Bakit ba ako nagkaka-hormonal acne? So, can you help us determine, Doc, kung ano ba yung mga possible reasons why people can get cystic or hormonal acne? Mm, okay. So, actually, ang acne, four main known causes. So, there's parang hindi nag-regulate properly yung balat. So, the skin renewal, hindi properly nag-regulate. Yan, nagka-clog yung pores. Yung dead skin yung cells skin yan. Yung dead skin cells na mumuo. Yes, yeah. doon nagsa-start. Then, after that, there's increase in oil. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Yung oil production. Then, nagkakaroon din ng changes sa uh, microbiome. So, there's increase in bacteria. Kaya, yun ba? Mas may nana, di ba? Because there's a build-up of bacteria. Actually, our skin has normal bacteria there. Parang much like like our stomach, di ba? May lactobacillus dyan na nanahimik lang. But then once the environment changes due to yan, clogged pores, increase sa oil, dumadami din yung bacteria. So it contributes to the acne formation. Lastly will be inflammation. Pamamaga. Yun yun for main causes for your acne formation. Iba ang cause sa trigger. Trigger dyan na pumapasok yun. Hormones, lifestyle, stress, skin care, mga products na hindi, kunya, hindi hiyang sa skin mo. Hormones is really the number one known cause for acne trigger. Usually sa chin jawline. Ba? Sign niya na hormonal acne. So, usually tinatanong niya, bakit chin and jawline? They say, kasi mas marami daw oil glands over that area na kumukuha ng signal from the hormones. Kaya mas dyan, mas nakikita yun effects of 
hormonal acne. Aside from the face, some also manifest on the chest and even the back, especially if malalaki. Yeah, so we always ask kung meron bang nakita rin sa body, body acne. It can also be signs na baka hormonal triggered siya. When people think na they're breaking out kasi kumamit sila isang skincare product and then nagsisistic acne sila. Ano yun, Doc? How do we go about that? Is it caused by their hormones? Is it caused by their skincare? Or maybe it could be both reasons. Or baka may reasons pa sila na hindi nila na to take into consideration, di ba? Yeah, actually, when it comes to using skincare products, especially if you have sensitive skin, tapos feeling mo nagre-react ka, nagkakaroon ng bumps, usually the bumps that we expect from skincare products na hindi kahiyang, mostly we expect small bumps lang, hindi yun inflamed na cystic type. Usually, we expect the bumps to be not that inflamed like cystic acne. So, if you feel na you change your skincare products, tapos ang lalaki ng breakout mo. There may be other factors at play. At play yeah. So, aside from hormones, lifestyle, diba? stress, actually, it's also known trigger for acne formation then. It's really an interplay of everything before blaming it all on just the skincare product. Madali kasing i-blame yung product, eh, diba? Na parang, anong ginamit ko kasi to? Doon ako nag-breakout. So, ito yung culprit, diba? But we tend to forget na baka nag-breakout yung skin natin because na-irritate yung product. Pero in the first place, we already had underlying acne, acne that could yeah. be caused by our hormones, di ba? So, it's all of these factors coming together na baka may role lang si skincare product pero, kumbaga, hindi siya yung main na nag-ano, di ba? Yes. There's also a bigger issue na kailangan natin i-address, yes. di ba? Mm -mm. So, how about genetics naman, Dok? Meron ba yung Dok na, ay, yung lahi kasi nito may, ano eh, hormonal disorders. I guess that's also possible. Yeah. Acne can be genetics din. So, usually, we check din parents, mga kapatid, kung may acne-prone skin. So, usually, genetics may play a role because it may have effect on how your hormones are playing inside your body, inside your system. There are certain conditions then that can cause hormonal imbalance. This can be really an interplay of genetics, um, internal medical condition that can contribute to the development of hormonal acne. So more on hormones, though, I think one of the biggest problems when it comes to mga females experiencing acne is yung tinatawag natin PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm sure marami sa audiences natin na female are very familiar about this. Actually, PCOS, number one, can be talaga adult-onset acne. Wherein females come in, they say, nag-on and off breakout on the chin and jawline. When I see my patients with that, I really ask their history when it comes to their cycle. Regular ba or irregular? Kasi these are some, parang checklist mo na, baka kailangan ko ipa-work up to check if she has underlying polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS kasi hindi lang hormonal acne. Other signs yan, irregular uh, menses, even increase in hair growth, yung unusual sites. Yung ibang sa scalp naman, nag-hair thinning then Weight gain, Doc. Weight diba? gain, yeah. It can be related din kasi baka dysregulated yung insulin. Mm. So, nagkaharoon lang din ng weight gain. So, these are factors that we have to check to properly address her hormonal acne. But then again, if wala naman siyang other symptoms, just plain breakout then baka lalagang hormonal acne lang siya. But then yun, it's really important to be checked properly. Kasi PCOS, when we say PCOS, some may need oral medications, hormonal, hormonal therapy, um, or even lifestyle change. So they go hand in hand. So when patients come to me, when I feel na mukhang may PCOS, pinapablab uh, lab test namin yan. And I really refer din to OB. OB. Yes, kasi polycystic. Hindi naman nasasabi yan na, ah, polycystic ka na. Hindi ko naman nakikita <laughs> na, ay, yun, OB. Ay, OB. <laughs> Mrs. John, di ba? So, yeah. They have to have the ultrasound done. And chine-check nila yan, ah, mukhang cystic. Kasi they really check the ovary to see if there are cysts there. There's parang may guideline, eh. may parang criteria to check, ah, mukhang picos talaga siya. Actually, when it comes to referral to OB, I usually ask my patient, ha, kung may namimiss mang cycle, how often na namimiss. Sometimes kasi pag when they say nagde-delay lang in period, a few days, but monthly meron. So, hindi pa ganun ka highly suspicious na baka may PCOS or hormonal imbalance. And also, I think it's really important then if you are told that you have hormonal acne, especially for females, hindi yun automatic may PCOS ka na. Iba kasi kinakabanalad, Dok. Sinabihan mo ako may hormonal acne, baka may PCOS na ako. So, you really have to go back to the other signs or symptoms. Yeah, kasi... Baka naman regular. Baka regular. Oo, pero talaga nag-hormonal acne ka lang. Ganun siya. Actually, for female, actually, may female pag malapit na yun. Cycle, you feel your skin is not not that um, nice, parang ang dugyud-dugyud, parang, no? parang ang dal, yeah, parang, yeah, because of the hormonal changes during that time. But then, 
even if they say na ilan months na mimis, tapos delayed talaga ng erratic talaga yung cycle nila. Aside from that, they experience other symptoms like increase in hair growth, in sudden weight gain, or even hair thinning on the scalp. Mm. So those are some signs that I really want her to be referred to OB. What are the usual treatments that are given when it comes to hormonal-related acne? And also, how are they different or similar kapag i-compare natin sa mga regular acne medications? Like yung mga alam na nating tretinoin, mga benzoyl peroxide. When it comes to hormonal acne, mostly cystic na siya. So oral medications talaga, it's really important. So it depends. There's an increase in androgen, yung male hormone. So usually, we look for oral medications that can lower the androgen hormones in your system. So usually, na uh, oral medications can include oral spironolactone. It's being used off-label for hormonal acne. They're given left and right in the States. Here, I'm going to start pa lang right now. So uh, I give it to my patients then, especially pag I see na hormonal triggered yung acne niya. Siyempre, dapat wala kang heart problem. We hmm. check it also kung walang known heart problem. And if you don't have any like electrolyte imbalance, the spironolactone can increase your potassium level. And important then for females na may hormonal acne before taking inspironolactone, make sure you're not pregnant kasi nga niyo lower niya yung male hormones ng katawan. If <laughs> nagkataon pregnant ka and your baby is male, baka mawalan siya ng male hormones kasi na nilower din nung spironolactone yung hormones ng baby. So make sure before taking in any oral medications, they have proper um, assessment by your doctors. One medication that I always hear about, birth control pills. Medyo mixed kasi yun ako akong parang reviews. Hindi ko binibigay sa kanila doka. I'm just saying, <laughs> yung kinikwento lang sa akin ng friends ko na parang pag birth control pills sila, some of them have good results na nag-stop yung breakouts nila. Then other people naman, parang mas tumala pa daw yung breakouts nila. So, could you help us explore this topic? Yeah, actually, birth control pills, OC pills, oral contraceptive pills, there are different types. So, meron dun progesterone-only pills, and meron din combined OCP. So, when it comes to hormonal acne, we prefer to use combined type of OCP. Combined OC pills, it has a combination of estrogen and progesterone na hormones in there. That's what we usually want to give to our patients who are experiencing hormonal acne versus progesterone only pills yun yun usually we want to avoid that now usually when it comes to your usual cycle ng hormonal changes progesterone it's the one responsible for triggering acne breakouts yun yun nag-umaangat tumataas yung level right before our menses sa females sa cycle so that's the reason why during that time before magkaroon ng mens na feel natin na mas lumalabas yung breakout because of progesterone. So that's the reason why I want to give OCP, mga pills, hormonal pills, the combined OCP, where there's estrogen and progesterone. Para hindi lang progesterone lang. Kasi pag baka your friend is taking progesterone-only pills, that's the reason why nagkakaroon siya ng breakout. Breakouts. But then it's really important then to ask their OB. Kasi there are certain um, gynecologic na condition that may need progesterone-only pills. So it's really important to have a good discussion or ask their OB then kung they can shift their pills right now to other types of pills. How do they determine if spironolactone or birth control pills? It depends then. Kasi usually pag spironolactone, we derms, we give it. But then if there's a uh, cause behind your hormonal acne, then sometimes we really refer to OB because it's their field to give OC pills. But then, some derms also give mga hormonal pills then for their patients. So, I think it really depends. Kasi some also ask for contraception. This is the time we give hormonal pills. So, I think dito kasi medyo conservative pa tayo. Yes. Yeah. Unlike in the States. States, they really give hormonal pills right away. Pag nafeel nila, wala sila lang. Kasi they're more open to the use of hormonal pills. Unlike here, mas conservative pa rin tayo. When it comes to hormonal acne, Doc, yung pregnancy, Mm -hmm. Can that also be a factor as to why magkakaroon yes. ka ng acne? Yes, oh, yeah. Actually, pregnancy is one of the um, state wherein your acne can be triggered because due to the fluctuations or changes in your hormones as well. Some of my patients, nung before pregnant, wala silang breakout. Then when they got pregnant, nagkakaroon ng breakout. Kasi nagkakaroon din ng changes in the hormones while you're pregnant. 
So, it can be a possible trigger then. Pero paano yun, Dok? Diba? Pag pregnant ka, bawal ka <laughs> bawal mag... Bawal oral meds. Yes. Bawal. There, are safe, bawal. there are safe ingredients for pregnancy na pahid. Like azelaic, azelaic acid. acid. Benzoyl, actually. Benzoyl peroxide, it's safe. Yeah. So, lisilic, they say, may certain percent. I think lower than 4%. It's okay to be used. But yeah. So, don't give up. Remember to take good care of yourself for and kahit na buntis ka. Okay, Meron namang safe ingredient. So, yung topicals, like yung tretinoin, benzol, azelaic, and then antibiotics. Anong role naman yung napaplay nila doon? It depends on the degree of acne that you have. If mm. mild, moderate, or severe, that's the time we check. Ah, ito, okay lang to, pahid lang. Ito, moderate to severe, needed na yung oral medications. So, when it comes to oral antibiotic, usually we check kung hindi ba talaga hormonal triggered, hindi siya related sa PCOS din and then we see na medyo moderate to severe na medyo inflamed acne tapos never pa talaga nag-try ng any other oral medications and then the first step talaga it's giving oral antibiotics so we check also but then when it comes to oral antibiotics syempre there's a time limit for that you cannot take antibiotics forever di ba? kasi there's what we call antibiotic resistance so for example uh, meron ang gustong mag-consult talaga sa dermatologist Pero ang usually kasing nagsa-stop sa kanila do, yung budget, di ba? If budget is a concern for someone who maybe has hormonal acne or parang isip niya baka hormonal cause yung acne niya, what are some tips that you might be able to give them? It's really a matter of knowing when it's the time to seek help. Most of the patients that I get before seeing me, they tried mga over-the-counter products. So if there's minimal or little improvement or no improvement at all, and if you feel that your breakouts Worsen, then this may be a sign na kailangan na magpatingin. Now, there are various options of seeking consult with your doctors then. So, some goes to clinic, hospital, or even there are free clinics then right now. Some goes online then. So, it really depends on the accessibility. Next will be to know and prioritize anong mga products to use. So, mm. f- of course, basic skincare is really important. Eh? Well, like uh, face, wash. face wash, yeah, sunscreen, moisturizer, that's yeah. basic. But then to add on to your acne regimen, it's important to look for ingredients that can help control your acne. Iba kasi sa super daming nilalagay na serum, serum. essence, toners. So, sa dami nun, wala talaga active ingredient to control your acne. Hindi mo talaga nakukuha yung benefit from your skincare regimen. Sayang, sayang lang yun budget na nilabas mo for that. Serums, essence, toners are nice add-ons. But then if you have active concerns like acne, it's really important to prioritize muna yun gamot. gamot. Keep it minimum. Kasi if you try or use a lot of other products, you're not sure baka mag-irritate. Hindi mo na mapipinpoints kung saan ka nagre-react. So when it comes to hormonal acne, do, you did mention also a while ago yung pag-change ng lifestyle. What do derms usually advise sa pag-change ng lifestyle? When it comes to lifestyle modification, syempre, number one, to have proper sleeping habit. The quality of sleep also is important. Ang tagal nga ng tulog mo pero putol-putol. Hindi rin siya healthy for you. So, it's important to have proper sleeping habits because it also have an effect on your skin. And aside from that, yun, with your diet-wise, actually, I think diet is really number one question yan when it comes to acne, yeah. diba? Like, haladok, yung mga chocolate ba, oily food, or mga dairy, may effect ba yan on acne trigger? Now, actually, based on available studies, they say mga high glycemic index na food, yung mga processed sugar, yung sa dairy product, actually, it's more of the skim milk pa nga, eh. Skim milk. Yes, if you na over intake, it may trigger inflammation in your system that can contribute to acne formation. Kaya mahilig ka sa sweets talaga. I really tell my patients, no need naman to remove completely sweets from your life. Tinitigyawat ka na nga, hindi, ang lungkot mo pa, hindi ka pa nakapag-sweets. Diba? So yeah, usually ang example ko is, if you're into sweets, kaya milk tea. Everyday ka nagmi-milk tea. Try to take it in moderation. Treat yourself weekend na lang. Basta the key word there is in moderation. Parang ang confusion ng iba sa community when it comes to lifestyle, lalo na sa diet, actually even sa sleep, sa healthy habits in general, is kapag ginawa nila to, the next day, breakout na sila, tapos akala nila, or parang biniblame nila talaga doon. Yeah, okay. So, my understanding, Doc, is yung mga ganitong habits, they're not necessarily like the main cause 
Pero kung meron ka ng acne problem, pwede niyang palalain to. Tama ba yun? Tama, ba? tama. Yeah. Actually, don't blame it. Kanyari, ay, nagkumain ako ng sweets kagabi or cake kagabi. Kaya, yes, nagkatigyawat ka today. Don't blame it on the cake. Don't blame it on just one factor because it's really an interplay of everything that can trigger your acne. Kasi, Doc, I guess, ano din eh, very easy to blame it on certain factors. Pero there's really no one cause talaga, Doc, mm-hmm. na nag, ano, they're all, at the end of the day, parang, tigisang factors lang sila pero parang meron talagang underlying cause na acne that you need to treat. Yes. Lalo na when we think lifestyle, when we think diet, so many people turn to mga supplements. Kain ka daw ng more of this vitamin kasi may deficiency ka, ganyan. Meron pang isa doke, yung spearmint tea. Oh yeah, yeah I've heard of that actually. Could you also help us explore yung topic na yun? Kung baga, ano yung role niya sa pagpapagaling ng hormonal acne or sa pag-treat ng hormonal acne or pag-control? Actually, oral supplements, they are just nice add-ons. Kaya supplements yung term, di ba? Mm-hmm. It just supplements your first line of treatment when it comes to acne, especially when it comes to hormonal acne. Don't rely on supplements, oral supplements alone to help you control your acne without proper acne regimen, without proper oral medications. Some kasi, they would rather spend their budget on oral supplements. Tapos, ayaw nila mag-spend na on their skincare. Actually, when it comes to mga deficiency, deficiency, mga vitamin deficiency, it has to be proven, actually. You have to check that. We also get it from our food, like your fruits, vegetables. We just take these supplements as a nice, parang pampatulong lang. But at the end of the day, they are not must-have. They are nice add-ons. At this point, mga known oral supplements, no known harmful effects naman. Because mostly, these are naturally seen then and produced by our body. They are just given to help support para lang makatulong na dumami yun level nila sa katawan natin. Unless you have other medical condition na bawal ka a certain medication or certain supplements, then yun, bawal talaga. Pero in general, oral supplements, they don't have much harmful effects for us. But then, remember lang, they are just nice add on support support group lang sila kumbaga yung hero natin are the acne medications parang sidekick lang sila sidekick yeah yes pero most of the again parang most of the heavy lifting yung gamot talaga for acne mm-hmm. or yung mga hormonal problem so yun yung role i guess hindi naman masama mag spearmint tea yeah. actually parang masarap na ang spearmint yeah, tea di ba yeah spearmint tea they, this related talaga hormonal acne kasi they found that it can lower the androgen level right now there's really no direct study pa with the use of spearmint tea to hormonal acne. Available studies, it just shows the experiment T with it comes to increasing hair growth and hirsutism. So, yun yun meron study. So, eventually, they found, ah, baka nakaka-lower siya ng male hormone. So, baka nakakatulong din siya for hormonal acne. Wala naman talaga siyang harmful effects sa katawan. So, eto Doc, isa pa sa lifestyle, yung stress. I think it's a very known thing na kapag stress ka, ang daming pwedeng mangyari. Hindi lang acne, di ba Doc? Yes. Parang pwede ka magkasakit. <laughs> Diba? What are some tips, I guess, that you could give in helping us determine kung stress ba yung cause or tips to reduce yung stress? Kasi iba-iba yan eh, diba? Yeah. Actually, stress is really a known trigger for a lot of conditions, not just acne itself. But then when it comes to hormonal acne, stress can relate to increase in inflammation in our system. Increase in inflammation may lead to the formation of inflamed type of acne. So, ang stress kasi, it can't really be fully removed from us, diba? Kanya-kanya tayo ng stress. I always tell my patients din, that's the reason why acne can only be controlled there's still no cure. Yes. Cure meaning permanently, ay, isang bigay ko lang, forever ka na hindi tutuwaan ng tigyawat. Some of us gifted talaga yung skin. <laughs> Clear skin. But most of us, even me, I also get breakouts. Normal yan. But that's the reason why acne can be controlled. Actually, it's a matter of perspective, I think. I think for me, when you're handling stress, manage it well or have a proper outlook. Actually, Doc, parang I'm noticing something, lalo na sa mga lifestyle factors. Pag inisip natin mga lifestyle, ang habit ng Filipino Pino is parang I remove. Ay wag akong kakain ito. Wag kang matutulog ng ganito ka ikli. Wag 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 wag. Pero parang ang nanotice ko doc is more of management dapat rather than removing so much. Dapat we learn how to manage it properly. Na we only get the right amount of the right food. Um, of the food that na we enjoy, natin, the right amount of sleep we na manage, natin yung yeah, mga I think habits natin. it's a matter of adapting and adjusting. So you don't really have to be so strict about it. Because if you have a lot of food, you have a lot of food, I think it's a matter of adapting Adapt. to your daily routine. Din, diba? I'm just curious, because um, the most that we're talking about is 
parang hormonal acne that happens in women. Can it also happen to males? As in, pwede ba akong hormonal acne? Could there be issues uh, related to my hormones that can give me acne? Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, hormonal acne affects both males and females. Mas na highlight lang on females because we have the regular cycle namin, di ba, menses. So, parang mas na highlight Ay, pag malapit na yun, mens, tsaka mas dumadami yung breakout. But then, both males and females experience hormonal acne. Because hormonal acne is really related to the male hormone, which is androgens, di ba? It's just a matter of parang being aware of it. Kasi sometimes, pag mostly males, di ba, parang, ah, okay, tigawat lang, di nila masyadong pinapansin. But then, yeah, baka it can be really hormonal acne na rin. It can also happen on the chest and even the back. Yun, minsan malalaki, na-inflamed. So, it can be related to hormonal trigger, hormonal acne in males. I just realized, di ba, merong mga ibang bodybuilder na, for example, they use yung mga pinagbabawal oh. na mga steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yung parang side effect nun is nagkaka-acne mm, sila. Mm, yes, because steroid, male hormone. male hormone, yeah. And steroid per se can also trigger acne. Yun, mga injectable nila. So, that's the reason behind. Alright, so actually, sobrang in-depth ng discussion namin ni Doc on hormonal and cystic acne. Kasi nga, ang dami factors that can come at play. I'm sure yung mga nanonood na video na to are people that are hormonal acne sufferers or cystic acne sufferers. Any wisdom that you can share sa kanila to help them go through the process? Yeah, oh, I like the word wisdom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yung yung word talaga, hindi wisdom. doctor's advice, wisdom. For you who are watching this, if you're suffering from hormonal acne or be it any types of acne, never give up. Because there's always hope. We are here as your doctors to properly guide you as well. And um, don't just blame it on the hormone lang. Kasi there's really a uh, inter... Um, play of other factors that can trigger your acne or your other skin concern. Especially when I see my patient, I take it holistically. I just don't see it skin lang. I take it on a um, holistic level because it's really important to manage each of these factors to be able to have and achieve that healthy skin. So I think at the end of the day, there's really a lot of factors in play. Um, there are management options for each of them. Don't lose hope. And when it comes to acne, it can be controlled. If you think about it, ang daming treatments for acne ngayon, di ba, Doc? And sa dinami-daming causes and factors that lead to acne, ang dami ring mga treatment options. It's just a matter of choosing the right one for you. Na siguro yun yung madedetermine ng dermatologist, di ba? Kasi yun nga ang dami, hindi mo sure kung baka mamaya nagtitake ka nga ng medication, tas ikaw lang pumili, mali pala yung medication, di ba? So, with that being said, Doc, grabe! <laughs> Yung discussion natin sobrang in-depth. Thank you, thank you so much for having this discussion with us talaga. As in, ang dami natin din-discuss daw. Ang dami nga. Ang dami na cover din na topic. Thank you. Thank you, John, for having me. Where can people find you in social media? Oh, okay. My social media handle is the Derma Mama PH in Instagram and um, TikTok. So, ibigay na lang sa akin yung docking information. If you want to contact her or schedule an appointment or a consultation with her, we'll put all the details in the description box. Let us know if if you want more content with Doc Jaja in it. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye!